Good morning, good morning. And thank you for having us in this constituency. Our community manifesto series this morning has brought us to the Juapon market in the North Town constituency. And it is great to be in your midst this morning to touch base with you, to listen to you, to know what your grievances are ahead of election 2024. So we will start by speaking to some of the market women here. And just to give you a brief background of what this community looks like. This is the North Tongue constituent. All right. Good morning, good morning. And thank you for having us in this constituency. Our community manifesto series this morning has brought us to the Juapon market in the North Town constituency. And it is great to be in your midst this morning to touch base with you, to listen to you, to know what your grievances are ahead of election 2024. So we will start by speaking to some of the market women here. And just to give you a brief background of what this community looks like. This is the North Tong constituency. It has a voter population of over 110,000 as at 2021. So you can imagine that the numbers have gone high as at 2024. But this constituency has been a very tough one for the NPP because it is the stronghold for the NDC from 1996. Well, for the 2024 elections on the NPP side, Dr. John Xavier Eleblu is the PC coming from the MPP side and he's going against NDC's Honorable Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa, who has been the sitting MP in this constituency for the last 12 years and he's actually going for his fourth term. The people here live a very simple life, primarily they are into agriculture, fishing and small scale trading. There are some issues in this constituency, but you cannot come to North Tong and not remember the biggest man-made disaster that hit this constituency about a year ago. Now the VRA opened the Akosombo Dam and spilled an amount of water that has never been imagined in this country. Displacing over 27,000 residents, 69, over 69 communities. And the question this morning is, has the members or have the members of the community even recovered from this disaster? And I remember when this disaster happened, Honorable Okujeto Ablakwa described it as the VRA creating a man-made disaster as if they are embarking on a mass murder. It's only a miracle that every life is still intact. Not even one life was lost during the disaster, but it doesn't take away the fact that many still have been displaced. Many people still do not have homes, and it's actually a miracle that we are even seeing smiles on the faces of the people in this constituency. But this morning, represented on the MPP side, of course, is the parliamentary candidate Everybody calls him Savior. That's how they call you here. So, Honorable, you are very, very welcome. But I'll give you the opportunity to introduce yourself and to introduce the other people on your side as well. Honorable, you're welcome. Good morning to North Tong. Good morning. To all the communities in North Tong. All the six traditional areas. I greet you this morning. Uh, TV3 audiences, I speak. I'm speaking to you this morning from Japan Market, and I'm saying good morning to you all. It's a beautiful morning, and we are blessed to have your program with us this morning. I am Dr. John Xavier Yao, Ella Blue, a senior lecturer at the University of Ghana, a director at the Biotechnology Center, Coordinator for West Africa Center for Crop Improvement, WACI, a leading scientist in legume improvement, and somebody who is a food security advocate, and someone who is passionate about the livelihoods of the people of North Tongue. 
So I greet you this morning from this spot. And I would like my team to introduce themselves very well. Absolutely. So we know that we have a solid team. Absolutely. To unseat Okujeto. Take him out of parliament. I'm telling you, he's going out of parliament. Thank you. All right, pass the microphone. A round of applause for Honorable. All right, quickly, let's finish with the Thank introduction. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. My name is David Nkegwe Agonyera. Okay. I'm the Constitution Secretary uh, for the New Patriotic Party. Right. Um, I happen to be uh, in contention with Dr. Sivion Leblou. I am solidly behind him. Um, we went for the primaries, and um, as a symbol of unity and how poised we are to unseat our brother, we are here as a united front um, to confront issues here in the constituency right. and see how best we can win a seat. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And then, sir, you are? Yes, yeah, so I, I'm Samuel Maulik Plain Servo, the communications officer of the ruling MPP uh, here in North Tong. Um, I'm part of the team. Uh, we lend the support we can for the team. Uh, it's my prayers that this contest will be a contest of five years and not a zoo a Exactly. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Honorable, hold on. Because you are incumbent and because this is your TIF and this is your town, let's pass the microphone to your other members and then it will come to you finally. Good morning, sir. Your name? Good morning. I'm Kennedy Monwe, the NDC's communications officer. Right. For the good people of North Tong. Okay. Thank you. Ayazu. Ayazu. Ken. MFA. Ken. Madakuku pass microphone and miwe kabakabasia. Madakuku now. I am Dominic Adobo, aka Osama. NDC constituency vice chairman. The leader who destroyed the senior Elebru. All right. Honorable. Many of us know who you are. But please, FO Manakuku Nainam Akbe. Many of us know who you are already, but by way of introduction, please tell us who you are one more time. My name is Samuel Okujato Ablakwa. I am the member of parliament for my beloved North Town constituency. Let me welcome you, Kukuti, and your team Thank of you. TV3. Thank you. Uh, we are very, very excited that you have chosen North Tong as part of your community. community All right, we are back again. Honorable, please continue. Yeah, so as I was saying, it is really a delight to welcome you and your team to my beloved North Tong constituency. This is a constituency made up of six traditional areas. Right. We are here in the Dofo traditional area. We have the Volu traditional area, the Fujoku traditional area, Togoma traditional area, Bato traditional area, and the Mepo traditional area. So these six traditional areas make up the North Town constituency. And uh, let me use this opportunity to convey a special gratitude to my beloved constituents. In the last election, the 2020 election, because of the love, the commitment, and the loyalty, and the loyalty that they have towards their member of parliament, we made history in the whole of Ghana. North Town secured 89.7%, the widest victory margin in the whole of Ghana. And I know that in 2024, in 2024, we shall break that history that we set and set a new one, a new record. Our target, our target for 2024 is a minimum of 94%. And we are working very hard towards that. We are not complacent. We are working in a very determined and committed manner. My entire philosophy about service is to improve the lot of the people is to carry out a leadership that is anchored on empathy on selflessness on sacrifice and on total devotion towards improving the livelihoods of the people right. and over the last 12 years that is exactly what i have done 
to improve the lot of our people, All right. to always be there for them, to advocate for them okay. in parliament, in the chamber, and on the ground in working hard to improve their livelihoods. Very well. That has been my hallmark Very well. as their member of parliament. Very well. Please, a round of applause for Honorable. Well, the people are here to speak to us so we know exactly what it is that you have done for them. They are here to fact check. They are here to tell us if all the things that you are saying are really, really true and how they are looking forward to you doing more for them. But like I state, stated earlier, this community is full of people engaged in agriculture, fish farming, and then small scale trading as well. This morning, we have some of the market women here with us who want to start the conversation for us. Merakuku Indinami. Unko, what's your name, please? Unko de? Merci. Merci. Va microphone. Bon vide. Aha. Merakuku unko yenye Merci lavi. Okay. Merakuku unko yenye Merci lavi. Okay. Okay. Merakuku unko yenye Merci lavi. 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 Everything that has gone on in the last four years, they ele nyere ha asieme de ele asiele yiha yata milefi. Ene guku yo asiema milenyide. Okay. John the Silva milenyide bu. But as in a M P P vava M P P top vava milenyide mi atokpo mi akonyide fine. Gaka fi fi ayala M S S na mi alekbebe. Let me go ahead and cry. No. Let me go. Ah, oh. And no, blame your ma. Let me be me go away. Let me cry. 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 sanitation is a problem yeah. well so the first woman who spoke to us has bitter concerns about sanitation conditions in the market she's complaining that they do not have enough toilets here in the market so because of that people tend to defecate actually where they sell their store she said the MPP promised that they were going to build a lot more toilets for them here in the market but they've not been able to do so and her first point actually has to do with the economy she says the market is just not good for them whether they sell here in the market or they carry it on their head outside the market nobody is buying maybe my be our buddy a guy me leo yeah tomo le no fle a lo chetai and no kwasi kabere matan fle and no kwasi nami okay and no kwasi nami yare me tibe ma be chejre le me leku me jire na provisions no okay fine kwe chwe again Again, that is transportation. Eh, yeah, na. And no, who has to seek by low cheta. Na ni abe meko. I fifty cities go plan na ne. Bega kama igen chola. Koga da regi seventy cities. Leka ma wa fi ajira wa ingo. Okay. Na mi va o da regi. Okay. Na mala chola. Meseme, meseme. So I'm just trying to find out why they are not buying the things that she's selling. And she says that it's because it is overly priced. They are very expensive. If she picks 50 cities today to buy a particular item from Accra, because that's where she brings the words from. If she picks 50 cities to buy a particular item, by the time she goes back tomorrow, it's a 70 Ghana. When she comes, who is going to buy for them? So if the government can do something about the skyrocketing prices on the market, they will be very glad. Merekuku, Akbenao. Ewoche. Let me say your concerns. 
Merakuku, back close to the microphone. Okay. Thank you. Nyankwanya lumo anyo na belinda. Sister anyo, bonu nami. Yo, manya market women o domotora ka. Okay. Alaba ba ayika na lankura jopo ayika testa la miasi ya. Yeah. Akweba ukwa plan no jini le edu omo. Alaba no go fatu ko la unha unra la la eti jopo ka. Alaba na jingo kuwa upo na unpla ganu. Kaka chote miyaka ko miyafu fu na na kufado akosia. Nana kama gaji ni la vota regionu. Jopo la jiza. Nana kama gaji imu. Gakpana njia. Nana ukude te maka. Oba corona virus ba. Bana inade gela. Yekana 14 gana sidi. Afi inade ge. Naka kona. 14. 14 gana sidi. 1-4. 1-4. To go and then come in. 40. Another 14. Another 14. They are all together 28 gana. 28 gana sidi. Yekana. Kakaika corona virus ba. Oh, when I meet times three. Wow. Ika ba na kung jaja ko ba fi adiya. Manya leke na ko na zabo. Times three. Times three. Ela sure. Eh, yon we na mi. Nya tepe ya. Nya tepe. Nya tepe times three. Okay. Da ayna ba. Ne mi ako mi jaja ko fi la mi kajra na mu. Okay. Da ne nya ba mi ka na jra na. Right. Akwe ba eba ko lo. Ba ha ika endi sino zidiya. Oh, na na mi mas lock. Mi asi chalo mi ko na trangwe. Eh, mi ko vide ke leja vide vya. Gake MPP me na mi loan wa. No mas lock facility. No mas lock. Mareku yo. Mo na mi na na ko na na mo. Okay, thank you. Alaba gakwa denti ya. Alright. Nanya ba ebe kumda da ko choke ko vya. Uh huh. Eh, mi ayi na loan hoga. Nanya ba ebe ko loan three thousand na. Da amo bu bo pa loan yo mi ba ko na. Mi ko na four thousand five hundred. Ika nye interest, ika nye... Plus interest. Da apa na na ba, kaka na ba jira ngon vo la, na ke fa ba tri mant ko la. A kaka ta vo. You default. A mou da jira han vo. Da mye la vo ta ri jina jwa po fi a jia. Mye na na ke ma sa mou. Da do ko mye la ma ko. Da mye ji jim ba, mye bu fo ika nye ma ha ma. Ma ha ma. No, va ko zi a na mi. All right. No, da mye to a kru vi nye nye ima ka mye la. All right. No, da mye to a kru vi nye nye ima. Akpe. Akpe. All right. The second lady has also spoken and she says that in the time of the NDC, when this constituency had a drop on textiles, the economy was much, much better because at the end of the month, when workers' salaries come through, of course, they are able to come to the market to buy. But it is non-existent at the moment. So things have become super, super difficult for them. Now, as market women, when NDC was in power, they had access to Maslock loan facilities. But as we speak at the moment, they've not had any sort of... They haven't had any facility in the last eight years that the NPP has been in government. And it is a bother to them. And she wishes that Mahama could come and change things for them. All right. Efo. Efo. Mikwajirai. Mikwajirai. Sir, it's your turn to speak. It's your turn to speak. No, no, no. But two, two market women have spoken. So the fisherman has to speak as well. Hello, bro. All right. Davi. Davi. Fonusia. Good morning. Um, can we have some order on this side? Can we have some order on this side? No heckling. You are not supposed to heckle anyone at all. Allow everyone to speak, please. Davi, Fonu. And this party was here. Me body and you can't look for matter. And this party was here. Me pop of a total of MPP. MPP don't want to know how. What I'm a Tula Yama. Blue Oba Oba Lapa that I'm not like MPP. I love that to your top of that to a young woman as a son. No, no, but go on your young. I can't make one of the black over on your young. No, 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 Get a factory over play. I never mean to tell me and to tell me and I come from you. He come and come as a summer latra, never tona, never la to three million. This is why four million, five million. And I mean, German, I never call it you. And no man, not to do anything. Never, 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 never,
So she also has concerns about the harsh economic conditions. And she says that they've been crying that things are terrible, things are bad. But the MPP is also singing a contrary song, saying that things are comfortable for them. But for her, she doesn't believe and she doesn't think that things are good for her. So she's crying, advocating and praying that the NDC comes back. She stays there too, and she's choosing NDC because for her, NDC treated them better in their pockets. All right. Davi, Edwe Aponwa. Uh huh. interest. The second lady has also spoken and she says that in the time of the NDC, when this constituency had a drop on textiles, the economy was much, much better because at the end of the month, when workers' salaries come through, of course, they are able to come to the market to buy. But it is non-existent at the moment. So things have become super, super difficult for them. Now, as market women, when NDC was in power, they had access to Maslock loan facilities. But as we speak at the moment, they've not had any sort of... They haven't had any facility in the last eight years that the NPP has been in government. And it is a bother to them. And she wishes that Mahama could come and change things for them. All right. Efo. Efo. Mikwajirai. Mikwajirai. Sir, it's your turn to speak. It's your turn to speak. No, no, no. But two, two market women have spoken. So the fisherman has to speak as well. Hello, bro. All right. Bro. Davi. Bro. Davi. Fonusia. Good morning. Um, um, can we have some order on this side? Can we have some order on this side? No heckling. You are not supposed to heckle anyone at all. Allow everyone to speak, please. Davi, Fonu. Madaku. Madaku. NDC party first year. Me put if any of my alu for matter. NDC party first year. Me put for photo tola me ukuu MPP. MPP tola ba upo na maha. Wana me chula nyama. Kulo oba oba la pata data ni matani me like MPP. Ala me ratu nyato bana tu bavya kama na sasa. No no kwa kula hawa benu ala nyonyo. Akami ya me kwa benu ala kwa kula hawa benu ala nyonyo. No mana tali la NDC yoma. Ala me mitu NDC po. Jeta fatri oba kule. Ana me mi anu jamu anu jamu no me na kopo na miu. economic conditions and she says that they've been crying that things are terrible things are bad but the MPP is also singing a contrary song saying that things are comfortable for them but for her she doesn't believe and she doesn't think that things are good for her so she's crying 
advocating and praying that the NDC comes back. She stays there the two, and she's choosing NDC because for her, NDC treated them better in their pockets. All right, Davi, Edwe Aponwa. Are you a market woman? You are not a market woman, you're a community member. Please raise the mic. Oh, you are speaking first. Yes. Okay, let's go. Please, your name. My name is Haklego Francisca. Francisca. But popularly known as Sweetie. Sweetie. Yeah. Okay, talk to us. Um, I don't know if you're a market woman, 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 but maybe not if it's other background I put you a lot of people. I'm what I'm Okay. Because all the wealth things. Okay. And the kind of pavement all the market. Right. Which is giving us a proof. The entire MP end is to throw away. The kind of gate of fence I will have is made by MPP. Toilet the market. Fifty line now look at me at the market and I walk by toilet. All the door one fifty line. But the other woman said it's not working. The the other one. woman said it's not it working. Is working. And that people we, are defecating all we can over go the market. There right now. The it's, major, not, it's not true. The measures must be put in place by we, the market women, okay. not the government. So, what are the market women doing wrongly? Please say it. What are the market women doing wrongly? Because you said the measures must be put in place by the market women. What are they not doing right? Okay. Okay. Because hiding the door for the dead around. Okay. Because hygiene is from us. Because they say charity begins at home. Okay. Tamianto wa komi apa apa memu kwa asimu. Right. Ava kwa ududua dada asimu. Okay. Basi ya attack kuku. Fifi la na lola, we can go inspect it as you are here live. Did you just clean it because we were coming? No, not that at has, all. We've got footages, we've got videos. It has we've got been photos and we've got videos that will be playing as we move we along. Can go there so if working. you are not giving me accurate information, I'll hold you this to it. This is accurate, more than accurate. All right, no problem at all. When the videos come, you show Thank me whether you. it's accurate or not. Sweetheart, your name? Uh, I'm Eunice Abiu. All right, Eunice, uh, talk uh, to uh, us. I'm Eunice Abiu. Nana ni de kava ko nu concern be enu ole se senle dapo market le nofton bia me dibe mana nu anya nyen to han la business woman me mi ye gen mi de vai plan for pa e 13 cedis le gen keke nu han at least day na ko 5 cedis da le jide han lo 4 cedis da le jide manya de kaya drag be de ka ga ke no wo vai plan 13 cedis le gen he wa va jire 35 cedis 40 cedis Okay, continue, please. And continue. Continue, continue. 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 Want to go to Bossa San, have well over of your tea. Nothing else, and we draw cover you with your job. I mean, you have got now. Cannot obey and empty pillar power, empty pillar, and minion. Me on North Tongue today. We should forget about party. Let me build me on North Tongue. No one, okay. Oh my god, no, could you don't come up quite here? What level you are going on your own? Come on, okay. For me, when the fact is there, I'll tell you the fact. Thank you. All right. Thank you for speaking to us this morning. Well, she's saying that some of the market women here are just way too greedy. If you go and buy an item in Accra for 13 Ghana cities, and you come back to drop a market and come and sell it at 35 Ghana cities, that is very unfair. And who are you expecting to buy your wares at 35 Ghana city? whilst you bought it at a cost price of 13 Ghana cities. Her second concern was about sanitation. And she says that there's a lot of jealousy in the market. Just because market woman A feels that market woman B is selling more than she's selling, she will go and defecate in the stall of market woman A or B. And that is what is causing the sanitation problem that they have here in the market. Well. We've listened to some of them. It's okay. And well, she also talked about 
the conditions that prevailed before in the NDC era. That if you came to this market, especially during the rainy season, it was a lot of mud. But that's not what we have here right now. And all of us can experience and see that this place has been well... Is this pavement? Yes. It's been constructed for them, and they are not experiencing muddy conditions anymore in the market. Honorable, I will come to you. You've listened to your community members. Well, they've spoken from side A and side B. How are you faring in the community? And how true are all these things that they are saying? Well, thank you very much. Let me commend my constituents for their very insightful comments. I would like to confirm that the pavement that you see here, in my first term as member of parliament, I teamed up with our NDC DC and we constructed all these pavements that you see. So this wasn't done the by the MPP, no. it was no. done by the NDC. Yes, yes. in my first term. That and is a lie. The, after, after the pavement project lie. we did, before I became MP, we didn't have an abattoir. And so it was very untidy, unseemly, unhygienic for our meat producers, our butchers. We established the first abattoir. It was one of my first projects that I executed as member of parliament in my first term here in the Joapo market. In addition to that, we did phase one of the fencing project. And then under the current DC, they are continuing with the fencing project. So Joapo market has always been at the center of my priority interventions as member of parliament for the North Town constituency. I have also left out the first phase of the KVIP project, which we did. We did this in my first term as member of parliament for the North Town constituency. So I have never abandoned the people and the, the market women will confirm to you, I'm always with them, always visiting, carrying out small loan interventions to support them. Those who need scholarships, their students, their wards, I have been assisting them with scholarships. So far, if you look at market women in the constituency, I can say that at least 100, minimum 100 of their children are under my scholarship scheme, benefiting from the MP scholarship interventions. When you, when you go, when you go, when you go out of the market, in the adjoining communities. Remember that market women do not only live and work in the markets. They have children who must go to school. They are also part of the larger environment. When you go across the street to Dosek, as member of parliament, the girls' dormitory, the fencing project, the school buses, the administration block, the 12-unit classroom block that recently was constructed. These are all my interventions at DOSEC. Under my tenure, the DOSEC, Dofo Senior High School, has been transformed beyond what it used to be. It used to be really a school that you will not describe as a secondary school. But today, for the first time in the history of DOSEC, they have a girl's dormitory, something they have never seen before. Just across the road, our Muslim brothers and sisters will tell you, I single-handedly renovated the Joapo Mosque. So now we have a modern mosque, tiled floor. The first time they have seen a tiled floor at the mosque, I did it for the good people of Joapo. When you go, when you, when you, when you drive up from Joapo, I have, I have delivered. Hello, hello. Honorable, continue with this one. Continue with this one. Thank you very much. Just, just driving above from Japan to the Tagaji community, for the first time in the history of North Town and indeed this entire corridor, we have a surgical theater, what we are calling the John Evans Atta Mills surgical block, for the first time in the history of our country. I collaborated with SOS International of the United States of America, and we have established this surgical block. When you go there, 
we have modern state-of-the-art surgical equipment so our mothers no longer have to go to a kosombo or ho or 37 yes yes so so those those are the surgical equipments that i ordered which are the tagaji medical block right now that's those are the beds over there right now when you go there you see them and we have doctors there we have nurses there who are working there before this intervention our those are the incubators that we have we have brought there we didn't have incubators here we didn't have these uh, suction machines we didn't have uh, these uh, theater machines we did not have the theater beds we didn't have the delivery beds that you see on your screens all of them have been supplied by your member of parliament we have a medical doctor we have nurses we have occasional outreaches that we do recently we had a surgical team who came in and did free surgeries for our constituents here this is what i call transformational leadership and our people are benefiting this is real life it is there the people are experiencing the change in their lives and it has cut down maternal mortality which was on the ascendancy we have cut it we have also cut infant mortality our mothers can now deliver in dignity in good health environment and our babies even as 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 they are delivered these nana nya de kava ko lu concern be enu o le sesen le Continue, please. And continue, continue. We should forget about party. Let me build me on North Tongue. Okay. Oh my God, no, could you don't come up quite here? What level you are going on your long come on? Okay. For me, when the fact is there, I'll tell you the fact. Thank you. All right. Thank you for speaking to us this morning. Well, she's saying that some of the market women here are just way too greedy. If you go and buy an item in Accra for 13 Ghana cities, and you come back to drop a market and come and sell it at 35 Ghana cities, that is very unfair. And who are you expecting to buy your wares at 35 Ghana city, whilst you bought it at a cost price of 13 Ghana cities? Her second concern was about sanitation. And she says that there's a lot of jealousy in the market. Just because market woman A feels that market woman B is selling more than she's selling, she will go and defecate in the stall of market woman A or B. And that is what is causing the sanitation problem that they have here in the market. Well, we've listened to some of them. It's okay. And well, she also talked about the conditions that prevailed before in the NDC era. That if you came to this market, especially during the rainy season, it was a lot of mud. But that's not what we have here right now. And all of us can experience and see that this place has been well... Is this pavement? Yes. It's been constructed for them, and they are not experiencing muddy conditions anymore in the market. Honorable, I will come to you. You've listened to your community members. Well, they've spoken from side A and side B. How are you faring in the community? And how true are all these things that they are saying? 
Well, thank you very much. Let me commend my constituents for their very insightful comments. I would like to confirm that the pavement that you see here, in my first term as member of parliament, I teamed up with our NDC DC and we constructed all these pavements that you see. So this wasn't done parliament. by the MPP, no. it was done by the NDC. Yes, yes. in my first term. That and is a the, after, after the pavement project lie. we did, before I became MP, we didn't have an abattoir. And so it was very untidy, unseemly, unhygienic for our meat producers, our butchers. We established the first abattoir. It was one of my first projects that I executed as member of parliament in my first term here in the Joapo market. In addition to that, we did phase one of the fencing project. And then under the current DC, they are continuing with the fencing project. So Joapo market has always been at the center of my priority interventions as member of parliament for the North Town constituency. I have also left out the first phase of the KVIP project, which we did. We did this in my first term as member of parliament for the North Town constituency. So I have never abandoned the people and the, the market women will confirm to you, I'm always with them, always visiting, carrying out small loan interventions to support them. Those who need scholarships, their students, the awards, I have been assisting them with scholarships. So far, if you look at market women in the constituency, I can say that at least 100, minimum 100 of their children are under my scholarship scheme, benefiting from the MP scholarship interventions. When you, when you go, when you go, when you go out of the market, in the adjoining communities. Remember that market women do not only live and work in the market. They have children who must go to school. They are also part of the larger environment. When you go across the street to Dosek, as member of parliament, the girls' dormitory, the fencing project, the school buses, the administration block, the 12-unit classroom block that recently was constructed, these are all my interventions at DOSEC. Under my tenure, the DOSEC, Dofor Senior High School, has been transformed beyond what it used to be. It used to be really a school that you will not describe as a secondary school. But today, for the first time in the history of DOSEC, they have a girls' domestry, something they have never seen before. Just across the road, our Muslim brothers and sisters will tell you, I single-handedly renovated the Joapo Mosque. So now we have a modern mosque, tiled floor. The first time they have seen a tiled floor at the mosque, I did it for the good people of Joapo. When you go, when you, when you, when you drive up from Joapo, Hello, hello. Honorable, continue with this one. Continue with this one. Thank you very much. Just, just driving above from Japan to the Tagaji community, for the first time in the history of North Town, and indeed this entire corridor, we have a surgical theater, what we are calling the John Evans Atta Mills surgical block, for the first time in the history of our country. I collaborated with SOS International of the United States of America, and we have established this surgical block. When you go there, we have modern, state-of-the-art surgical equipment. So our mothers no longer have to go to Akosombo or Ho or 37. Yes, yes, so, so those those are the surgical equipments that I ordered, which are the Tagaji medical block right now. That's, those are the beds over there. Right now, when you go there, you see them. And we have doctors there, we have nurses there who are working there. Before this intervention, our, those are the incubators that we have, we have brought there. We didn't have incubators here. 
we didn't have these uh, suction machines, we didn't have uh, these uh, theater machines, we did not have the theater beds, we didn't have the delivery beds that you see on your screens. All of them have been supplied by your member of parliament. We have a medical doctor, we have nurses, we have occasional outrages that we do. Recently, we had a surgical team who came in and did free surgeries for our constituents here. This is what I call transformational leadership. And our people are benefiting. This is real life. It is there. The people are experiencing the change in their lives. And it has cut down maternal mortality, which was on the ascendancy. We have cut it. We have also cut infant mortality. Our mothers can now deliver in dignity, in good health environment, and our babies living as, as, as they are delivered. These interventions we have done just in the Joapon enclave to transform the lives of our people. Now, one of our ladies said that it is rather our market women who are engaging in profiteering and they are adding too much to the uh, value of their wares. Let us be honest. In 2016, under this economy, President Mahama left us with one CD exchanging, one dollar exchanging for four CDs. That was the situation. Today, it is one dollar. You need more than 16 CDs before you can get one dollar. That is a reality. And our market women are operating under an economy which has been declared insolvent, which has been declared bankrupt. We have been downgraded by all the credit sovereign rating agencies, from Fitch to Moody's to Standard & Poor's. For the first time in our country's history, people are being compelled to take crude financial haircuts. They are talking about a domestic debt exchange program. So the so-called economic messiah, Baumia, who has destroyed this economy. Everybody is feeling it. We are all living under this bankrupt economy. And that is what the market women are complaining about. When I went around this morning, they told me, a bucket of tomatoes, you need 100 cities. In 2016, they told me that with 20 cities, 25 cities, some of them said 15 cities, you could get a full bucket of tomatoes. Today, you need more than 100 cities. So don't blame the market women. The market women in Japan are not responsible for the collapsed currency. They are not responsible for an exchange rate which has worsened, which has more than quadrupled. Meanwhile, we were told by Baumia that he has the magic wand. He is the economic messiah. That one is to four is not good. That they are going to make sure that they reduce the exchange rate burden so that at least we can move to one is to two. What has happened is rather a worsening, a total collapse of the currency. And that is what our market women okay. are living under. So they should not, their MPP executive should not blame our hardworking market women right. who are only trying to survive. They are not engaged in any profiteering. It is the harsh economic conditions that they are all reeling under. Okay. And that is what has really affected the applied. Finally, one of the women talked about the impact of Joapon Textile Factory. Yes. As I speak to you, more than half of the workers there have been laid off. They are at home for 14 months now without salary. They have served notice to the police and to all the community leaders that they are going to embark on a demonstration on the 4th of October. The Joapon Textiles has collapsed. When we were in power in 2015, I spoke to President Mahama and he gave the, the Joapon Texas a bailout of 6.5 million Ghana cities, which helped to revive Joapon Textiles. Today, Joapon Textiles has become a pale shadow of what it used to be. And the irony, to add insult to injury, they have added it in their so called 
performance tracker, which is just grand deception that they have supported the factory under their, their 1D, 1F initiative. What kind of support? Right. When the factory is collapsing, when workers have been laid off for more than 14 months and they do not have salaries, their working conditions no longer exist, how can they come to the market and shop? How can they take care of their children? How can they take care of their wives? So these are the, the reasons why the economic conditions of our people have worsened. Okay. But I want to assure the good people of Japan that under the NDC's reset manifesto, we have captured Japan textiles. We say that when we come, we will revamp Japan textiles so that Japan textiles will benefit under the 24 hour economy policy. We were going to change the economic fortunes so that instead of less than 300 people working there, that is a factory. If you look at the original plan, more than 4,000 people can work at Joapon, Texas when it is functioning. We are going to make sure that we totally overhaul and revamp Joapon, Texas, which will have a ripple effect on this market right, and on the economy of Joapon. Thank you very much. I'll give the MPP the opportunity to respond to everything that the constituents have said and to what the incumbent MP has also said. Savia. Savia is here. I would like to first of all acknowledge that the world, the world has suffered an economic crisis. We all know, we all know the hypocrisy of the MP is astonishing to speak as though all the economic woes of Ghana is on the head of His Excellency Baumia is astonishing. It is a blatant lie. The world has suffered economic challenges and it's not only Ghana. It is not only Ghana. We have seen even the United Kingdom have inflation rise to its highest levels. And so you cannot sit here and think that you can fool anybody with those statements. It is not acceptable. Now let me go on to the issues. The drop on market that you are seeing, most of the sheds here, the sheds, without, without the sheds, would there be a market? It is the MPP that built the sheds. All these sheds that are here. It's the MPP government that built the sheds. The wall around the market was also built by the MPP. They cannot deny it. Let's be grateful. Let's be grateful to His Excellency Nana Kufuado and Dr. Mahamad Ubaun. When, when was it built? The sheds, when the was sheds. it provided? When was it provided? 2017. 2017. Yes. Okay. Now, let's go on. Not true. It's not true. The new ones, the new ones were in 2019. But then, these, these sheds and also the pavement. But the people are saying it is not true. It is true. It is okay. True. Do we have? It is true. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It is very true. No problem, no problem. Please it continue. Very, very we are fact checking. True. We are checking you can to check. ascertain whether it's true you or not. Check. Yeah, we are checking. My now, producers are checking. Let's go on, sir. Let's go on. We have many, 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 many interventions by this government in North Town. North Tongue is not a stronghold for NPP. North Tongue is a stronghold of NPP. This is their World Bank. NDC, you mean? NDC. This is their World Bank. NDC's World Bank is North Tongue. Now, let's go through the projects one by one. 1D1F, Agro Processing, Cinnamon Stone, Alcohol Manufacturing Limited. Bako, Bako. ICT Laboratory, 
These are real pictures of the MPP's work. This whole book is all the work done by the MPP, plus more. ICT laboratory block at Mepha, St. Izito, SHS. Can you, can you also tell us in which years all these were completed? Has it been in the last eight years? Yes. In the last eight years? Yes. Okay. Yes. Let's in go on, please. Eight years. Great. They cannot deny it. Okay. Rural telephony to improve communication at Mafi, Volo, Peyugba, Dufo, London, Wakwe. All these are villages okay. that do not have communication, proper communication. And now they have proper communication. Now they have it under this government. Okay. If you are to go through the book, we probably may not live here today. Some so if you can pictures, just summarize so. and just go over them quickly, oh. because we've got some of the pictures you on the screen as well. The market that we say we built here, uh -huh. it's not only here. Okay. You know, when Dr. Mahamadou Baumia and Nana Kufuado want to do something, they do it across the entire area. Mm. We built the same market, open market, with sheds at Bato Market. You can go and verify it. Okay. And it's a fully functional market. Yes. Vibrantly going yes. on now. Yes. Market women are there. Yes. Selling. Yes. Battle, battle market. It's got toilet facilities. Yes. Go on, sir. Yes. No problem. Just and go even on. the toilet facility here is 12 seater toilet facility. The one here. Yes. In Drapong. Built by this government. So then, why are we still having sanitation problems? They told you already. They explained to you. You see, there are attitudinal problems that we have to also tackle as people. Okay? We must acknowledge certain things. This, not everything this that project you're talking about, it. is it the same one on the TV right yes. now? That's the same one? Yes. Okay. So can you just look at it and let's continue quickly? Let's continue. Rehabilitation of Aiwata, Ayawa, Wuho, Fida Road was done. By That's Victor. what you see right now. Yes. Rehabilitation of 20 hectares. It's right here. Degraded communal land using cashew trees. Reclaiming the land because of activities that polluted the land, like sand winning. They had to reclaim the land. 20 hectares of cashew has been planted by this government. Rehabilitation of 10 hectare degraded communal land using cashew trees, including 20,000 seedlings at that domain. These are places you can visit. These are places you can go and fact check. Okay? So let's not be deceived okay. by the NDC. All right, let's sir. move on. I have a few questions, though. I have a few questions, but you just may maybe mention three more so that we can continue. 12 unit block. At Aveime Battle SHS. Okay. 12 unit block. When was this one built? Battle, yes. When when was Aveime. this one built? Within eight years. Within this eight years. Within the last eight years. Yes. Okay, so the question I want to ask is the MPP is the sitting government. Yes. And I do believe that all these projects were projects that you promised the people of yes. North Town. Yes. Okay, so if you have delivered on your promise yes. and it was in the last eight years, yes. how come in 2020 you still couldn't come into power as an MP here? I just want to ask. I just Very want to justified ask. question. Yeah, I just want to ask. Very justified question. You see, as I told you earlier, North Tongue is the World Bank of the NDC. So, the people have been used to voting for NDC. Okay. But these also are very good projects that you have done. Papa J. Mm. We all know Papa J. Rollins did a lot for Ghana. Okay. And so, these people are followers of Rollins. And that is why they keep voting for the NDC. But that is changing because livelihood issues are critical. There is a 2021 survey, recent survey. If he doesn't know, let me tell him. That shows that North Tongue is the second poorest in the whole of water region. 
It is. By Ghana Statistical Services. It is. Is the MP aware? What has he done about it? We are looking at bringing in investments into North Tongue. And I vow to bring more than $500 million for agricultural projects in North Tongue. And one down one billion dollars for tourism in North Tongue. We shall work and make sure we eradicate poverty in North Tongue. That is why I'm here. If he is doing his work, a senior lecturer, a director will not move from the university and want to go to parliament. If he is doing his work, I wouldn't want to be here doing this market contest with him. Okay? If he was doing his work. So he, the MP, has so many questions to answer. Has he talked about these issues? Now let's move on. TV3, I want to thank TV3 for coming to North Tongue. Because this is the first time we are hearing Okujeto talk about critical issues in North Tongue. We thank you, TV3, for coming here. He has a loud voice. He has the media speech. He's a media guru. But he's using it for vigilantism. He should use it to promote North Tongue. Do you have any evidence to back what you're saying? Yes. That he's using it for vigilantism. Yes. He's sitting right here. Yes. Can you show me evidence yes. that he's using his space as Ask MP? Him. Honorable. Ask him. Ask Are you done? Because I want him to respond, please. No, let me let me explain vigilantism to you. We please have go government ahead. institutions. The police, the BNI, the judiciary. That is supposed to go after corrupt people. Right? Are you saying Anrabo right. is corrupt? No, I'm, I'm not saying he is corrupt. Okay. I'm saying that there are institutions that are mandated to go after corrupt people. If you are doing such a work of going after corrupt people, trying to show that this person is corrupt, that person is corrupt, you are taking the work of institutions that are mandated to do that work. And it is called vigilantism. When somebody decides on his own to be the lawyer, the prosecutor, and the judge of our issues, that person can be considered a vigilante. He's Leaving right. his core mandate as an MP. Look, I'm surprised at the NDC supporters. Look, I am here for all of you. I am here for the people of North Tong. We want to remove poverty, poverty from North Tong. So please, the MP must do his work. The MP must do his work as MP. He should stop going after people. He went after even my dad in 2012, uh, 2016. Just because of politics, he wanted to tarnish his image. He took him to court because he was a minister. He made sure that he was prosecuted okay. and found not guilty. Savior. He has done that to several people. Savior. Listen, a let's get a let's Latin Latin should not be allowed to be an MP. Savior. Honorable is right here. He's made a number of alleg He's allegations, here. including Sorry. vigilantism and all that. Do you have any response before we move on? Yeah, definitely. Look. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Please calm down. No, 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 no. Please calm down. Calm down. The NDC side is calm. Please calm down. Thank you, sir. Let's go on. Yeah, so... <clears throat> we clearly have... Can... Can we, can we have some silence? We clearly have... Savior, 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 please tell your people to calm down. Savior, please tell your people to calm down. All right, sir, let's go on. We can hear you on the TV, so it's fine. We clearly have a big problem on our heads. If a senior lecturer an aspiring member of parliament does not know the work of a member of parliament 
he does not know that MPs, our core mandate is to carry out parliamentary oversight, is for checks and balances, to fight corruption, to protect the public purse. Then we are in trouble. Then he has absolutely no business running for parliament. I am totally scandalized. I can't believe this. A whole parliamentary candidate. And he doesn't know that the principle of checks and balances, that whole principle is so we can have parliament as an institution to serve as a check on the executive to expose corruption, to fight corruption, to protect the public purse, so that we can save scarce resources to address the needs of our people. Then he has absolutely no business running for parliament. Absolutely no business. I mean, I am so embarrassed that he will be saying these things, having even the courage to say them publicly on national television. I mean, I, I'm, I'm so ashamed. The work of a member of parliament is to carry out oversight, is to ensure there are checks and balances, is to carry out scrutiny to make sure that whatever the executive does is subjected to parliamentary oversight. If he doesn't understand that, if he cannot do that, then he has absolutely no business offering himself to run for member of parliament. He should go and do something else. He shouldn't run for parliament. He has no clue. Absolutely no clue. I can't, I can't believe that. Now, now let me... I go. I go. Let's have some quiet, please. Let's have some quiet. Some quiet. Maraku. I'm a Maraku. I'm a Shaman. So, 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 quite clearly, quite clearly, our good friend does not understand the job he is applying for. He should come and let me give him something else to do in my office. He clearly that cannot be an MP. Clearly cannot be an MP. He should come. I'll find something else for him to do. Now let's let's move on, sir. Let's 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 listen to to him. I remember that when he was bridegroom. mentioning the projects. Yes, I'm coming you to projects. Shaking, yeah, you were I'm coming your to projects. Look, I didn't know. I didn't know that. All the MPP parliamentary candidates are learning from their flag bearer. I didn't know that. This, Why do you say that? This market shirt here. This market shirt here. This market shirt that you see here. They were not constructed in 2018 and 2019. They were not. They were not. The only, the only new market shirt. The only new market share is the one that was donated by the New Vision Transport Union. That is the only new market share which they contributed. He should learn, he should learn the history of the constituency. If you say, if you say that President Kufo, during President Kufo's term, President Kufo did some market share here. We will agree with you. Okay. But don't create projects for Akufuado when he hasn't done that. Don't do that. Let's move on. Now let me come to... Ago, Ago. Ago. Calm down. Ago. Calm down. Calm down. Please continue. Sir, continue. We can hear you. I go. I go. I go. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. So, so let me deal with projects. To be, to be very honest with you, Kukiti, when, when he was listing 
the projects that the government has done here. Those are projects that I leave to my assembly members to do. I mean, public toilets. You don't see them as public toilets. Uh, road graveling. But that's the. Pro but Those that's are projects the I leave to my but assembly that's the members. Of the MC. Let me, let me, let me take you through what what transformative what projects are. Honorable. Mm -hmm. Let me take you through what Honorable, major transformative projects are. Because these are things that MCEs are also supposed to do. So why are you downplaying what they have done? I'm telling you that I, I leave those kinds of projects. Okay. Graveling of roads, uh, two unique KVIPs, okay. and I leave them to my assembly members to do. You are a liar. You those are, are assembly liar. members projects. You are a liar. Let me let me take you through let me take you through what real projects look like real projects so so real projects for the first time in the history of this corridor for the first time the Joapon volu adidome road i lobbied for that first class road totally asphalted first class road. which year yeah which year 2015 and 2016. You constructed that in 2015 yes. and 2016. Yes. Is that correct? The, the Joapon Volo Adidome Road. Yes. 2015, 2016. Yes. The Joapon Volo Adidome Road. Yes. It's not far from here. I'll take you on a drive. First class road. It is the nicest road project in the whole constituency. Yes. I'm not is that. that it? No, no, no. That's this what is it. not it. That is what they but are doing. No, no, no. We don't do those kind of things. Oh, wow. First class. Bitumen surface, Joapon Volo Adidoma Road. Then we also did the first class bitumen surface, Joapon Fojoku Road. First class road, beautiful road, transformative road. Which year? In 2015. 2015. 2015. First class road. Let me give you more when we are talking about transformative projects. For the first time, we have the Tagaji Polyclinic, and we have the Atamil Surgical Block. For the first time, the first surgical block. Transformative projects. That is not all. Transformative projects. I have single-handedly converted all the blackboards to white boards in all junior high schools and senior high schools in this constituency. Transformative projects. That is not all. Are these correct? I have also provided. Are these correct? I have also provided modernized, modernized early childhood learning centers in all the six traditional areas. Twenty-five of them, okay. early childhood centers, kindergartens. This one. These are the white boards. Th yes, those are the the convention. And, and of you the are saying you boards. have changed all the black yes, boards in all junior white high boards. and senior high school. Is that accurate? Let me continue. Let me continue. Let me continue. As we speak, as we speak, I have brought in medical equipment exceeding two million United States dollars, and I have re-equipped all you, the how, health centers. How did you do that, though? I formed Your a partnership. Partner I partnered with SOS International. Okay. They are based in Kentucky. Okay. And all you do is that you pay for the the shipping cost. You pay for clearing the duties and then you pay a down payment of five thousand dollars and they will send you all the equipment that you need so so all I these equipment all these are, in equi are, here. Now. are here they are in ghana they are now. here in ghana here in north Tom. and they have been installed north Tom. in these hospitals go to japan go to tagaji go to fojoku go to the togoma health center go to the bato health center the bato catholic hospital go to the Mepa hospital they are all there over two million dollars these are transformative projects. Transformative projects. They are all there for you to see. And that is why health delivery has improved. That is not all. Now, let me come to... Let me come to the disaster that befell us. The spillage from the Akosombo and Pon Dams by the Volta River Authority. Okay, sir. During that spillage, for 
the first four months, I did not go anywhere. The parliamentary candidate of the MPP was nowhere to be found. Nowhere. I was here permanently. And during that period, I have worked with partners and we have established resettlement camps for 600 people. The first one... Is that the safe alternative yes, housing? Yes, the we safe are alternative about housing it. project in Mepa, okay. which is housing 300 people. I mobilized resources across the country. I personally donated 20%. That, that is it. That is it. For the displaced victims. His government has not done any housing project. Not one. His government. Not one. This is it. This is it. State of the art. Well equipped. He has beds. He has refrigerators. He has television. He has kitchen for our displaced people. Decent housing. They have not established a single housing project for the displaced people. I didn't stop there. All the displaced teachers, about 137 of them, I paid rent. I paid rent for them so that they could come back and teach our children. 137 teachers. Six months rent, free, non-refundable. Okay. That is not all. The tertiary students, tertiary students who were displaced, 50 of them, some of them are here. I paid their their fees, residential and academic facility user fees, 100%, full scholarship for 50 of them to go back to school because of the disaster. I didn't stop there. I provided millions of textbooks, millions of exercise books, millions of, of school standards for the displaced people. I didn't stop there. The senior citizens who are still in the tents as we speak, 1,360 of the displaced people are still in tents. I have selected the above 65 year olds, okay. about 200 of them, and I have paid one year rent for them to move them out of the tents. Their government doesn't care. They have abdicated. They are nowhere to be found okay. in caring for the victims of this man-made disaster. The students are here. The beneficiaries are here. The teachers are here. In addition to that, I have mobilized humanitarian relief items and all those who were displaced, the more than 20,000 people displaced, I made sure that all of them received relief items. We established the MPs relief caravan and we went to all the 23 camps, made sure that they all received relief items, including those who were stranded elsewhere. They have received cash grants, they have received blankets, they have received food supplies, they have received clothing. We have worked hard over the last one year. And I have also made sure that all those who have not been compensated, I have put a team of lawyers together and we are on our way to court to secure justice, to make sure that all the displaced people receive full compensation because the Akufuado Baumia government has abandoned our people, has neglected our people, has told our people that they are not citizens and they don't care about them. That is not leadership. That is not empathy. That is not compassion. That is not why the people vote for us as leaders. When they elect us, they expect that in their time of need, in their time of disaster, we will be there for them. We will care for them. We will not be like Dr. Ella Blue. He will be nowhere to be found. We will be lecturing somewhere and will not care for the people. No, that is not what leadership is about. He wants to respond. He wants to respond. Please pass the microphone so he can respond. All right, sir. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, um, it's good we are having this uh, discussion. But sometimes we need to put um, certain things right. Um, Honorable Samuel Okujetu Ablakwa make some emphatic statements which I would like to put them at the right perspective. Um, as I said earlier on, I work with um, Health Facilities Regulatory Agency okay. Okay. and I coordinate activities of the region. The facility that the um, Honorable Samuel Okujetu Ablakwa emphatically mentioned that he has spearheaded in building in Tagaji, I can, I can say in authority that I led the registration of that facility, mm. and the facility is being built by the Catholic. It's a chuck facility. We are talking about the yes, Adamil, please, 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 please. Oh, When you're talking, I have never spoken. Please, I have never spoken, please. Yes. So, so, yes. Yes. 
that facility has not been licensed for any private individual. It is a Catholic facility. It's a church facility. Yes, if he has supported some equipment or donated some equipment to the facility, that would be accepted. But to stand here or to sit here and claim that he has built that facility. Are these two I, different facilities that we are no, talking about? Yeah, at a male surgical block. Which at one? the target. Have you one? been there? No, the Atamil yes, surgical block. I have block. entered the media. We have Please commissioned it. The, the Atamil surgical block at Tagaji, yes. fully Please equipped. Is it valued at one point five million dollars. Honorable, calm down. Please. Honorable, calm down. Please. Calm down. It is no, no, the name do of the facility is Saint Anne's do Hospital. Don't do that. Saint Anne's Hospital. It is not Tagaji Hospital. It's Saint Anne's. I let the registration of that facility. Yes, it was initially a clinic. The facility was initially a clinic. There were some additions to upgrade the standard to a hospital component with the leadership of the Catholic organization they added to that facility yes so for him to sit here and say that he has built that facility I stand to record that but on our record on our record that facility has been built by the company or the Catholic facility and licensed by them so you should get that one right now he mentioned another facility at uh, where after the disaster what do you have done yes i will not deny the fact that he played an instrumental role in raising resources to get that one built but i can he cannot sit down here and say he single-handedly spearheaded that facility it is not a true city fm city city oh, tv okay city tv they were the front runners they were the sponsors of that facility but because he is the mp the safe alternative they, no, i'm moving to another facility i move from tagaji to mepa okay I moved from Dagaji to Mepa. So please, you see, let us get this right. For the fact that we want to win a political position, we shouldn't sit and uh, try to whitewash our people. Let us speak through to them. We want to build North Tong. We want to build North Tong. We want the development of our people. MP will go, and in fact, he doesn't know most of the corners in the, in the North Tong. Yes, but for the sake of this one, because he has... The, 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 the opportunity to speak to the media. He enumerated a number of things that he had not done independently. We cannot check. So please, I am challenging him on these two issues. Uh -huh. Now, Bato Hospital, Bato Hospital, he showed some items or he showed part of it that he was also there. You see, these things, we cannot, we, we shouldn't stop, we should stop telling our people lies. It is never true. These are church facilities. Bato is one of them. Bato is one of them. So why is he saying all those things? If you are as an MP, you have donated some items as part of your your, your common fund to support this facility. Well accepted. But you don't sit here on a big platform like this to claim that you have championed the building or been very instrumental in making significant progress on these facilities. You are downgrading the work of the Catholic facilities, which I will not sit down here to allow him to do. Thank you very much. Please pass the microphone to your colleague. He has a rebuttal and then we can move forward. I'll have to respond. Uh, Sunday tea here. Can we have some Sunday tea here, please? Uh, when we started, I, I said that. I said that this has to do with your track records. What you did to your constituents and not a Yazoo, a Yaza. Please, I heard my MP talk about deception. If that word will be allowed here, I want to say that he sitting here is a true definition of deception uh, because he's peddled so many things that are, are not true uh, if you check the records the truth is far from what he is presenting to us if 12 years in parliament 12 good years in parliament and what you have to say is that you let the negotiation for equipments <laughs> that i i think that you should give way for uh, i mean uh, a more competent person to 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 come now on floods on rumble when the floods happen you remember there was a committee formed by the assembly of which you were part now we are actually at sea as to why you left that committee form your committee and was receiving the cash items and the relief items and decided to be distributing them yourself uh, I think that if there are technocrats, political party reps, including yourself and uh, 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 top members of your party in a committee, and you decide to leave that committee and operate alone, 
that to me is not clear. Uh, now, on the, on the building, that secretary alluded to, Mr. Kujetua Brakwa, as he said, you cannot and you dare not claim that you have done this, you have done, and government is sitting at that money. Ladies and gentlemen, when the floods happened, government through the VRA spent in excess of 20 million in relief items and making sure that livelihoods are protected and not, and that is why a single soul was not lost. Yes, we, we acknowledge, please, we acknowledge, we acknowledge, we acknowledge the immense contributions he made as our MP. As an MP, we, are, we, 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 we want to accept that fact that he actually uh, played some vital roles. But majority of those roles were played by him because he was an MP. The office of the chief imam, the office of the chief justice, the judicial council, all these government institutions gave him money. And, and so, one year down the line, the constituents demand that he accounts for all these things. We can say that because he doesn't want to account Are you to his saying people. he hasn't accounted? No, no. And because he's dodging accountability, that is why he left the committee. Please. Okay. I'm putting it to him that the mandated committee that was formed he, that has the dcd the dc himself party you said reps, he abandoned and, the committee yes okay there is a relief administration committee formed by the north town district assembly he abandoned it he left us assembly because okay. he, he doesn't want to be part because he knows that if he is there and the things come he cannot do his own things what he's saying he has used the release items to solve the problems of his party people and cronies as I speak to you, some of the items were lost somewhere. People were stealing it. Let's try center. Ask him if it's not true. And, and, so, and so we beg him. He continued to be our MP for these few months that are left. We want him to just bring all of us on board. To go to Accra and try to organize demonstrations in cathedral and other things are good. But we want him to come here. He should come and organize a demonstration here. Uh so that the, 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 the bridge, the collapse bridge on the road he's claiming he built gets constructed. All right, come you see, now. You can he's shout and say your, 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 your Are you done, sir? Please, please, please. Sir, are you, you done? You can shout and say your uh, yezu, uh, yezu. But I can tell you that we had enough of these lies and of this propaganda. Remember the NDC is the only party that has the propaganda secretariat. Uh, we know his brother Sami Denvi and he himself are champions when he comes to that office. So media, don't buy into his lies. He will say nice things. You know, and you know he said look, and he's good in, you know, you know. So he will say okay. things that you think are true. But that is not the reality on the ground. Our district continue to be at the bottom. And let me see in this. Let me see in this. Please, let me see in this. He bought an ambulance. He bought an ambulance with our common fund. We want the papers of that ambulance so the ambulance can get going. Please. Since 2015, the papers of those ambulances, we don't know where they are. He claims it's his, his birthday gift or whatever, but we want those, 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 those things. And, and to land with, to land with, uh, Honorable Okujeto, if it is about paying fees with your share of the common fund, then please come again. <coughs> then my old lady at home can even be an MP. Now, you say that Dr. Alebru has no business contesting. I don't know the, when you become the one who determines who qualifies to be an MP. But I want to tell you that if you think you are undertaking your oversight committee uh, to just... Uh, check and balances as you were, you were alluding to. It is not in your bosom to judge. And so if you determine that one or two people are at fault, I mean their operations are not clear when it comes to the law, and then you go on to judge, then I don't see where that oversight committee right. is taking you to. So please, your point has please, been well we made. are fed up of you. We, we, we accept the fact that you, you did your quarter. Your point has step, been well made. step down for Dr. Ella Blue to continue for us. I thank you. Okay, just two minutes, please. And then, honorable, just two minutes. We are running out of time. 
Akpanemi lo, Akpanemi. NDC supporters so Akpanemi. MPP supporters so Akpanemi. Anya uh, Mbebe Magbole, I will speak ever for it to go into the ears of everybody. Ella Blue, during the spillage, is Eglobe, Yamano. And you can't feel it, Joe. Oh, my family, Joe. Can't feel it, my joy. And you're not going to your director of NADMO. And you're not NADMO. Oh, no, do you feel that? But my father, my father. And you can I eat your child more for no, oh, my father, and I can't do it. As I'm a crown, as I'm a, as I'm a crown, hi. Mecha, ma hundred cities, hundred cities. Na ame yo matamena. Nyeta, ma pla mo luha kope la uno. Nyeta, 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 nyeta. O ma pom as busy we. At the time, I was not the PC. I was not the parliamentary candidate. Okay. I was aspiring. Okay. The little I could do, I did. I went around sharing 100 cities to the flat victims. But you said you were the first person that called NADMO. I was the first to call NADMO. Mm. Now, Director Seji, Seji, I have his number. I called him. All right. He can attest to this. Let's wrap up quickly, sir. Now, so I did a lot as an individual, as a citizen of the community giving 100 cities and also making sure that i get them 100 right. cities to how many people do you remember to at least 300 people 100 cities to at least yes. 300 people yes in so, which community in mepe yes in mepe yes in mepe yes about 300 people received yes. 100 not, Ghana not, cities not, each. not only mepe you see that everybody's attention is on but mepe. but wait, at wait, the time let me explain. okay Everybody's attention was on my I was even in Mafia de Dogma. Mafia. But I, my question, I, have, I just have a, a little question to ask. I was it was there great to, that you gave everyone 100 Ghana City, but even at the, the time, evening. at the even time, the they needed relief items and somewhere to sleep more that than is the why money. I called NADMO. Mm. The institutions must work. Okay. So NADMO came in. And most of the items they gave it to him. They gave it to him and he made presentation. Okay. He was but, there. But with I the just DC. I just heard your member say Wait, that he continue. cannot account for the things that he received. But you are now saying More that he made came. presentations. More items came. So many things have come. That he cannot account for. He cannot account for it. I'll, I'll, wait, let me finish what I want to say. Please wrap up for us. I didn't hear him respond. And this is all Mada Kukunami. Miji, Miji. Maybe. I didn't hear him respond. Even here, he heard me say it again. And I've said this on countless occasions. I've made it known that North Tongue is the second poorest. And that is why I am fighting him. He has not responded to that. Okay. Now, MP has been in office has been in office for 12 years. Mm. If these are the things he is showing us that he has done as MP, he has failed. Wait, let me continue. Let me go to key projects that he tried to start on his own, even with common fan support, and they failed. The first one, Fojoku Market. Fojoku Market does not exist. He said he was building for Yoku market. He took money from common fund. There's no market in Fojoku. Now, JTL school. JTL school. Drop on here. We can take you there. There is not even a foundation made. He raised the blocks filled with sand and that was it. Failed projects by Okujeto. Now, when Catholics, missionaries, 
and others, people who feel for humanity are doing their work. You now take on their achievement as your work. You are such a big liar and it's disappointing. I didn't know you are falling to this level. Let me continue. You cannot attack him like no, that, sir. No, I have to finish. Let's be civil. Donations? Let's be civil let, let with our continue. choices of words and phrases that we use, please. Yeah, yeah, let's be, let's be civil. Let's yeah, be civil. Falling. What has he done? Let, let's respect ourselves. You show, you know, no, you, you cannot, tell, you cannot say done. here that he has fallen. Please, let's be civil. Savior, let's be civil. Let's be civil. Please falling. finish so that he can he respond. If Savior, I say you are falling. let's be civil. Wait, if I say you are falling, I'm very sorry. If you know what I mean, let's be civil. You are falling doesn't mean that I've insulted Savior, you. Savior, let's be civil. Please okay. continue. No. Please continue. I am being very civil. I'm Savior, being very can civil. you conclude so that we move on, please? Okay. Then don't say that I should be civil because I'm very civil. I want you to be very if civil you in your were choice in a of words. If you were in a constituency, second poorest in a region, will you not be angry? I will be. So wait, wait, wait. You are dealing with an angry people and you are dealing with an angry PC. Okay, because but... Because the MP has refused to do his work and he's going around the country doing what he's not supposed to be doing. He addressed now, that already. Donations. Several donations have been given to him from more than over 250 companies or agencies. CEOs. Ministers. They've all made donations to him. We need accountability. Okay. We need accountability. Right. He has promoted that project. Let him respond. I think it is Mahama who has done the project. Let him now, respond. The last Let one. Him the respond. last one. The last one. Sir, the, I've given no, you wait, enough the time. The last one. He made a point. All I three to, of you have spoken. I need to counter the last Please point. finish. Please finish. The last point is the Juapong at the Dome Road was started in 2016. That is true. July 2016. The only road that he is claiming, and the only road in the constituency, you know, if you go to Mepe, uh, sorry, if you go to Huawei, if you go to Huawei, Huawei Amewu, Honorable Peter Amewu, doesn't have to fight over the roads that he is constructing for the people. Because there are so many. And we can see so many asphalted roads in, 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 in what we're but can we talk about North but Tong? That's why we're North here. Tongue, there's only one. Mm. That's why we are fighting over it. Okay. There's only one road, so we are all fighting over it. But he's... 12 years, wait, 12 years in Parliament. There's only one road that he claims he has stuck, which is also a falsehood because it started 2016. Okay. They were out of power. They only graded the road. Graded the road leveled it and graveled that's your now, time sir the that's MPP your time. was the government that came that's from your time, 2017 sir. all the way to 2018 that finished that road okay all right honorable so many accusations leveled against you including unaccountability you getting out of the committee that was formed you've received um, donations and relief items from over 250 companies and all that honorable What's the truth in it? So, I go, I go, I go, I go. Calm down, please. Thank you. Let me place on record, let me place on record that as member of parliament for North Tong, I did not and I have not left the district oversight committee. Indeed, only today, the Honorable DC, Honorable Divine Fenu sent me a letter about a meeting coming up on Friday. You can talk to the DC. I have never left. I don't know where they got that information from. The fact that the, fact that the, work, the work I did as MP totally drowned the lackluster and totally unresponsive work that that committee did you can't blame me you can't blame me for being dynamic for being hardworking, for being visionary for being an mp who gets the job done you can blame me for that so so 
So you can't, you can't depend on me to revive your moribund committee. I'm still a member. I'm still a member. I never left. Number two, accountability. Accountability. This spillage affected many constituencies, even though North Town is the epicenter. I am the only member of parliament that set up an independent body known as the Elders Accountability Council, chaired by Professor Afedo and our chiefs from all the traditional areas, the six traditional areas. They are represented on that committee. They have an account. All the donations that came in went into that account, which they administer their signatories to. I, as MP, I am not even a signatory to the account. I don't run that account. I am big on accountability. And I am surprised. They are only the only, <laughs> they are probably the only Ghanaians who have not seen the full report of the Accountability Elders Council. Every donation that came to North Town, we published it. I have published, if you go on my social media handles, I have published every single donation that has come into North Town. Full disclosure, full disclosure. Everybody has seen it. Everybody has seen it. So, I'm wondering, are they blind? Can they see? Every single donation that has come into North Town, the reason why everybody loves to come to North Town, loves to donate to North Town, because we have structures, we have independent bodies, and we are transparent, we are accountable. We publish every single donation that comes in. Number three, they are talking about the statistics. Can we, can we speak? As for... Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. On a, Let's go on, on, a, on a lighter note, on a lighter note, the, the, the few people hide from outside who are here to shout away. The, the campaign result, the election result, shows who has been driven out of the constituency. It's a no-go area for other parties. No-go area. No-go area. Let's come back to the issue, sir. So, Let's so come they back should, to the they issues. Should, they should stop the comic relief. Let's come back to the issue, sir. Now, the statistics about North Town being the second poorest. Before I became MP, it was actually the poorest. It was actually the poorest. I have, through the work that we have done, raised it. If you look at all the other indices, we are doing better than we were doing before I became MP. If you look at even our BEC performance, our WASI performance, because of all the interventions I have made, I was the first MP to provide laptops to all our ICT teachers at all levels over 100 of them. I was the first MP to do that. I was the first MP to establish computer labs in this constituency. Go to Dorset. Go to Basek. I was the first MP to institute two mock examinations for all BEC candidates and WASI candidates before they go and write. And that is why, and before I became MP, this wasn't happening. And under the MPP government, they don't, they don't support the education directory to organize these, these mock exams. I do that with my resources and sometimes with the MPs share of the common fund. And that is why we are improving in every statistics. But my dear sister, doesn't it hit you as odd that those who are in government, who control all our taxes, control all our resources, they are blaming an opposition MP for their failure. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Those who are in government. It's incredible. Incredible. Totally incredible. Totally incredible. It is, it is only in the North Town MPP that they forget that they have over 90% of their common fund, the Digital Assembly Common Fund, they have over 90%. They have all the national resources of our country. The billions and trillions of Ghana cities. All the taxes that they have collected, including the obnoxious taxes, the e-levy, 
the betting tax, the sanitation levy, the emissions levy, all of this obnoxious, draconian, backward taxes, they collect all of it. It doesn't come to the opposition MP. And yet, they are sitting here, all of them, looking at me as their savior. They want me to come and save them. I will save you. I will save you. Togbe Wakbeji will save you. The incoming Mahama Professor Nana Jenopoku Ajima will save you. We shall save you. We shall save you. We will save you. Right. Even though you are collecting all the taxes, we will come to power and through all the resources, we will save North Town, we will save Ella Blue, all and right. we will save the MPP. Okay. All right. So we will be ending proceedings here very soon. I need to I need to quickly respond quickly respond to the hospital project. Yes, there was a confusion on that yes. one. Let's please, clarify. Please, for the record. Exactly which one were you talking about? All the projects I'm talking about are accurate, factual. If you go to Tagaji, I have established the Atamil's surgical block. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Fully equipped. The first and only surgical block in this constituency. I would encourage you after this program, right. let's go. During the commissioning, our special guest of honor was Professor Nana Jinopoku Ajiman and the former speaker, Right Honorable Doa Jaho. They came and we commissioned it. Our people are using the facility. If you talk to my public health advisor, Dr. Momo Ducham, he was the one who championed the project. Mm -hmm. I gave him the task. And that facility is there. The Mepe Hospital Project. Yes, the physical structure was done by the CTFM Foundation. The physical structure. But, but it was not equipped. Mm -hmm. I equipped single handedly it. equipped it. And on my birthday, on my birthday, I made a donation 1.2 million dollars with support from SOS International. So I'm speaking to facts. These are facts. These are facts. So, so I, I am, I am really disappointed. Look, Dr. Ella Blue said that we are fighting over one road project. He clearly doesn't know the constituency. Who, who delivered the Joapon Fojoku Road? NDC. Who delivered? Who delivered the Bato Mepe Dover Road? NDC. Who delivered the Joapon Volu Adidome Road? NDC. But you see, I'm not surprised when we are building resettlement centers when we are giving hundreds of teachers free rent, when we are distributing laptops, when we are building hospitals, when we are building roads, he says he gave 100 cities to some few people in, in, in Mafia, Mafia Didome, Central Town, not even in North Town. I pity this parliamentary candidate. All right. Okay. All right, there's a question that I want to ask. Can anybody recognize this police station? Is this police station familiar? Is this police station familiar? Why is the police station not in use? Why are we not using this police station? Good question. Sir? So we did this when we were in power. When, in 2016, they have refused to operationalize it. They have Savior. refused to operationalize it. Savior, there's a police station on the screen right now. We want to understand why this police... Hold on, sir. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We want to understand why this police station is not operational. Can you please explain? He built it. He built it. No, but then you are in power. So I want you to answer and I'll come to him. Why is it it operational? I, I built it. No, you have to operationalize it. You have to operationalize it. You have to operationalize okay, it. Let me I explain. have built it, but you are refusing to operationalize right. it. Yes, you let have to operate. The Ministry of Interior is under you, under your watch. Let me 
You have to operationalize it. Okay. Let me explain. Let me explain. Please. Please. The government, the government has built several police stations. He's talking of police stations. You can see Fojoku police station. Is this operational? It's operational. This is operational. Yes. All right. Okay. Okay. There are Fojoku people here. We were there only yesterday. We were there yesterday. We were there yesterday. I don't even understand that. All right. Wait. Sir, are you done? We need to close. We need to close. Okay. We need to close. Okay. Let, let. We need to go. I wanted to say, go for Adidome. When I was talking about the monies that I was sharing, I mentioned Mafi, yeah. Adidome. Yeah. That is just to correct that record. Okay. Now, going forward, I'm surprised that an MP that has been in government as MP for 12 years. I'm coming to you. Uh, for 12 years, he has been in parliament. Government after government, he has not built a single hospital. Okay. Wait, wait. No, I gave you show. enough time. All three of you spoke. He's they have to speak about as well. Missionary they hospitals. Need, they need to speak. They need to speak. Please Finally. pass the microphone. Can you pass? The, they need to speak as well. They need to speak. They need to speak. Yes, you will. Yes, you uh, will. Cookie, Cookie, yes, we have also have to talk. We have to talk. I can give you the history of the. Hospital projects. I can give you history of the police stations. The police stations. We have Fujoku police station built by the NDC on Abuja to Ablakwa. We have the Fujoku police station built by our former MP on Abuja to The only a police station built by the MPP, which is now being used by the gas dormitory at Volo Senior High. It is Volo. You can just drive 20 minutes drive from here. And you will see for yourself, Philly, Philly. Yes, we we'll build the community senior high in a year block, the modern infrastructure. You can see for yourself. They have never done any single secondary school in North Town. All the five secondary schools, we have given it the same project. You know, Professor Nana Pogajima, Honorable Gudetua Brakwa, as a deputy education minister, went to the UK to secure what we call the C project. You can fact check. And the five secondary school were under C project. The battle dormitory that they were showing was our project, was the C project. All the secondary school are to take part in the fencing war. We have done that. This is a project, life project that you can see. That's not true. Okay, quickly, thank you. All yes. right, quickly. When you look at the faces of the MPP guys, they admire the Honorable Kujo told a lot, even than their uh, leader. Hey, Look at them, they are admiring. Thank you. They are admiring. He's the, he's the leader, he's the, he's the landlord of infrastructure, and he controls North Tongue, operation 97%, is under control, and age is the number. But with regards to the floods, I work directly with Honorable Kujeto, very close, and it's as if everything is on his head everything everything from one community to the other for more than a month it was on the food that this it was no way to be found the single thing every small thing that they get they will locate their people and give it to them and they will leave the rest of the people so everything was on empty aside their resettlement and everything he has to give out his tundra to be conveying the students of these affected uh, parents to school every day until VRA came in with a bus. So, if they are here, my brother communicates director from the other side, he's from Mepe, I want to know what he has done. Even the roads in Mepe Township was in a very deplorable state. He took John Dramani Mahama, the number eight man, to send a, a road moving machine to work on them, he's there. Do you get it? The last time I asked them what they were doing, they said they also have family. They can work on people who are affected. Today they are here. Look at them. So, North Tongue people, if there's anybody who will work for our constituency, is Honorable Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa Tokbe Wakbachi. He's the only person. Thank you very much.
uh, wrap uh, up for us. Yes. So we can go. Uh, yes. I, I, I have one last point. Uh, Honorable Samuel Pujato Ablakwa. It's rather unfortunate throughout this discussion. I was expecting him to mention about employment on this discussion. He never mentioned. He touched employment. He issue. talked about employment but when he talked about drop on textiles. No, I. He I'm talked about, about drop on please, textiles. Please, don't answer for him. I remember. Don't no, answer I remember. For him. Don't answer for him. But I remember no, he no, said no. it. It is it is a projection he was making. Okay. He was making a projection. What's the question? Yes. My concern is that he is an MP for the past 12 good years. Yeah. He should give us statistics of people who have gained employment. Employment. The employment opportunity he has created okay. in this constituency. All right. And people who have gained before, that opportunity. Before he answers. Okay, he great. Has it. Okay, all right. Thank I'm you. The so he will answer. Now, before he answers, see, we also want community members to ask questions. Anybody has a question? You have a question? Okay, let's hear you. Ponu, Ponu, Ponu. Nyankwanye, Amu Se Anani Christian. Okay. A.K.A. Amu Manyo. Okay. Matibe, ma bie, onabo okuje to ablakwa. Aha. Ba, enya, vile jalo le, mye togo do duyema. Ojo abe kanwe, agrubakpo. Nyatiko, bakli, ogolo goyema. Enya, echi ya. Uh, community ma won't want her. Okay. But yeah, be a black bama, but you have yet. Mila Gia, I'm a Sam Mokwabe, I'm a Sam Lanuponto, only come off and Kakama Yabem Yapa MP, on a book with your two black one. When you come off and the Kakunya, a guy or Hola, exactly parliament. Yeah, a hoga, a gas fan, insurance fan, a hoga mafio. For the eight, uh, 12 good years, on a book with your two black one, SDJ. Okay, Honorable Ma tanto si jibe enu enu yeye wole do this is electoral area ke wa tan blog blog kana gbe agbaleme ye ko mi atakola epona ne ka 2019 mo pele e post social media wo ba eh nap ko vi o ka eh do gbele na aro o terminate o pe contract ye di do na le company ale le gbo po o yo na be sanote sano stone company na ma yo nko ma Abe di do na mere kare kase twenty na na la social media me ba yi nyen to to me ba yi company ma ba ba phone back bill manager ya lagama wona ma nya be ona bo ablakwa ayo yo pepepe e ti na yo ba okay ye ye le do di na mo lagaga ke yo agbe na be da the company manufacture their own raw material so the people they need is people who can plant cassava in the farm for that matter they have no vacancy for honorable ekuje to ablakwa Okay. Thank you. The way you people see our MP okay. as social media. Honorable, you want to respond quickly. Honorable, you want to respond, yes. And then you ask, yes. Okay. Hold on. Another question. Thank Another you question. Much. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yeah, my name welcome. is Nicholas Calvin Aboni. Okay. I'm a student. Nicole. Currently, as I'm here, let's go on. I am representing over 50 tertiary students from the North Tongue constituency. Right. These are the 50 tertiary students who benefited from the Honorable MP during the spillage. Okay. You know, when the spillage came, we were devastated. We were thinking how to continue our education. You are a beneficiary to... yourself. Very well. You I'm, are a beneficiary. I, I'm the lead coordinator. I'm okay. the lead coordinator okay. of the entire pro project. So what's the question? Now, our presence here this very morning mm. is to make an appreciation to the MP okay. as a way of commendation for what he has done for us. It is not only about the payment of that, but we have a presentation that we want to make. Okay, but there's a question. Hold on, hold on. There's a question that must be answered. When we finish, we can present the citation. Honorable, you want to respond? Yes, please. Kindly respond. So, 
he has mentioned a number of communities in our village. Exactly, yes. And I can confirm that in each of those communities he has mentioned, I have a project there. If you go to Nyatiko, I have constructed a modern chips compound, fully equipped. The chiefs were with me when we commissioned it at Nyatiko, at Bato Togodo. If you go to Wakpe, Wakpe, I have constructed another chips compound at Wakpe. At Zomai, we, I spoke to Pencils of Promise and we established a basic school, a basic and junior high school at Zomai, Zomai. If you go to Deva, Deva, we have built a chips compound there. At Ayiwata, I have built a basic school. At Ayiwata, Ayiram, I have done a modern water system at Ayiram. All the communities that he has mentioned, I have projects there. There is a reason, there is a reason why the chiefs and people of Northton came together and christened me Togbe Wogbeji. There is a reason. Next question. No, another person, another person. Another person. Yes, ask your question. My please. strategy, let me conclude. My strategy in Northton is that I always under promise and I over deliver. Okay. That is why the people of Northton, the chiefs, our queens, everybody calls me Togbe Wakbeji. And what that means is that I am the chief who keeps his word. I keep my promise. Everything I say I will do, okay. I do and I deliver beyond All right. expectation. On that note, let's have the citation so we can go to the next question. Let's just Thank have the citation. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me do Hello. my job that we can ask the question. No, let me do my job. Let me do my job. Let me do my job. I am not even coordinating that. That's not what I'm doing. They are just presenting it and that's it. Sweetheart. 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 Ask your question. Okay. <laughs> honorable. 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 Honorable, please sit. Your question. No, 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 please. Hold on. Your question. I go. Amen. Hello. Your question, your question. Please, there's a question. Can you please put the citation down? That's not why we are here. Thank you. Let's go on. Okay. Honorable, please sit. Your question. Okay. North on Utoma, I got the law about ninety nine percent. Yes, Faka, not a no double no dagbla, a weird and a quad dagba has dagba. Now, your private tractors, my house, six hundred is the law one acre. See, tell me a cuckoo, no, the no de wagbala and mountain me, Yanya come back on your bay, but a cuckoo, Miller, a corporate, and a tobacco to a corporate job by what Anutoma, a woman, a gamo, the market for Tonguma, this is a lot of Janabe, what I see, Bama. All right. So it's not a question, it's a comment. Question. Question. Is it a question? No, I want I want people who want to ask questions. You want to ask a question? Question. Okay. No, but too many questions from here. At least they should ask from here as well. Yes, let's go on. Question. Wait, is it a question you have? Yes. yes. Okay, ask your question, please. Come to the microphone, come close. Okay. Sairam, we cannot hear you. Uh -huh. Speak into the mic, please, Sairam. Savior. Okay. In twenty sixteen. We'll take that question as well. Yeah, please go to the microphone. Yes, sir. 
Madaku Nyankwenya here for Atayombe Zabas. Madaku, may I not forget about the youth of this country? Good. Not for any party here. Okay. So my question will go to Mr. Honorable Okujeto and uh, Dr. Savia. Savia. My first question to Honorable is I tell me now all the railway constructs now. You are not a bullet to a gomela. Oh, my dear morning, you. That because demonstration, like a speak in the microphone. That because demonstration, I was expecting Honorable to come there to do something about it. My vow, up to now, I'm talking. There is no road to the uh, to, 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 to our place. So due to that, I have a car. But so due to that, I have a car. But I have to sell my car because there is no road to my house. Unless I take a motorbike. But a car can no go. So I'm asking him, what does he do to help us to get a road over there? Because there's no road over there. All our roads are poor. And my second question to Dr. Elephant. Savia, yes, a question. The question is, you stand as a candidate for MPP. And the work I do, I'm a driver and mama money vendor too. You, your, your, your president candidate said, when he's come, he, he will abolish uh, he levy tax and bet. He is the vice president and president candidate. What are you people doing about ta that tax? Can't you do it for now so that we know that when you come to power, you will do it. We can't be there waiting for you to come to power before you abolish that tax. So I'm telling you people that if you have something to do, you must do it before December 7th. And my, my last question to Honorable. In North Tongu, our major problem is factory works. You don't have works over here. And the only factory we have is the JTL. The, 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 the JTL has collapsed. I'm expecting Honorable to call demonstration so that we follow him. The way he argue as the parliament about uh, national issues, I love it. But I'm expecting him to do that to us as North Tongue too. I'm not seeing that. That makes me angry. So I'm telling every youth over here that let's listen to the two of them and see them. The one that we think he can do the work, let's vote for him. And the president candidate too. Right. I think Baobia and Mahama are not the, uh, they are not the best candidate for us. Let's look for another independent. And well, I wish we, we vote for you can Chada. Determine that, you Thank can you. determine that on the 7th of December. But we need to end proceedings here today. We want to give both parties the opportunity to speak to the people. Let them know and understand why we must vote for you for the 2024 elections. And I want to start with Savia. Savia, you are the parliamentary candidate for the NPP. You are seeking to overthrow the very long reign of the NDC. What do you have for your people? Thank you for the question. Thank you very much for that question. And thank you, TV3. I will say it again that I will say it again that I am personally very happy TV3 has come here today. And I am so excited to see all these people of Northton who are interested in the development of their constituency or district. That's why they are all here. Thank you all for coming. My message for Northton is I am here. You heard your MP saying that you were the poorest and he was able to bring you to number two poorest. You heard him say it. I am assuring you to promote business, investment, money for your businesses, money for your businesses, investments into your education. I am a senior lecturer at the university and I will assure you that I have supported many, many, many people to gain admission and to continue their university education from North Tong. And I will create a special scholarship program for people of North Tong as NP. I will focus on business development, creating different business development centers across the 29 electoral areas to ensure that your businesses move forward. You know His Excellency Muhammad Ubaumia means 
business. And he is bringing in all the conditions, creating all the environment for business development across the country. And Northern will not be left out. First of all, I'm a unifier. I would like to first work on the, the crisis, the conflict, chieftaincy conflict in Northern. Under Okujetu Ablakwa, we have experienced chieftaincy conflicts. One minute more, sir. Battle One minute is a more. good example. I will make sure that I unite the people unite all the stakeholders the chiefs and everybody to ensure that we bring development through the tongue chiefs union let's wrap up then soon. for agriculture i am an agriculturist and i will make sure i have been able to raise more than 10 million dollars for the university of ghana so i will be able to bring more than 500 million dollars for agricultural businesses 500 to million dollars that is the target. From where? From donors, from partners, 500 from million. businesses. That is the target. Wow. Okujeto has left this place, but this place is a natural resource given by God. Look at the Volta River. Look at the mountains. Look at everything that we have here. We are blessed. And I will ensure that investments come in billions of dollars for tourism. Okay. Now, we, you the need to wrap up. Must get jobs. You can't go through everything. You need to wrap up because we are the giving people him just must two get minutes. jobs. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Businesses go with jobs. So when I'm able to create the business development centers to support the youth, to have startups, to have existing businesses reinvested in, there will be so much jobs in North Tongue. The crime rate in Bat uh, in Japan will go down. Okay, sir. Now. All right. I have already started with technical you, vocational training. You've exhausted training your time. And trained so many you've women. You've exhausted your time. So Can you please sum it, sum it up, please? Ready. You've exhausted your time. So, you know, it is, it is astonishing that 12 years, you didn't think of building one technical and vocational training center in North Tongue. I will build three technical and vocational training centers for North Tongue. Honorable. Honorable, please, with all due respect, you have just three minutes. Three minutes to tell your people. You also want to ask a question. No, we've exhausted our time. I'm sorry. We've exhausted our time. We've exhausted he, our he time. Spoke, he spoke more than three minutes. But, but don't, worry. don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm I mean, sorry. When you, I'm so sorry. When you, when you, I'm sorry. When you have a good case, you don't, you don't need too much time. Okay, Honorable, don't hold worry. on. Don't honorable, worry. hold on. Hold on. To be fair, just one minute. Just one minute. One minute. Just one minute. Ask your question. Eh, Media Kukulo, we heard him say that he had people. You heard who? We heard uh, Ikami Ornabo. No, no, no. One Let minute, him. one minute, one minute. Eh. One minute, otherwise I'll yeah. move on. Uh -huh. we, we heard you saying that you help people enter university. We have Ornabo, Mr. Samuel Okujato Togbe Wakbeji. He also said that he helped so many people also sponsorship. Let me ask them, the two of them, yes. I'm asking one question. Okay. The Okada boys that are in the streets, the farmer that are in the village, which of them, all of them help? That is the question I'm asking the two of them. Okay. Okay. Thank you so very much. So we don't deserve to benefit from their sponsorship. Okay. So we should be voting on the street. So you are advocating for the Okada boys, not Okada boys, and the no. farmers. Everybody. Okay. All right. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, okay. Question. Hold on. Let's Just one last one from this side. Last okay. one. So please ask one minute, please. Okay. Um. Oyombe, no. uh, innocent, Kajodansu. I have three questions for Honorable. You Ukujetu. can ask only one, please. I can ask. That time they, they is gone. Question one, A, B, that and C. time is gone. They the follow each other. Sum it up and just uh, ask. The first question, the whole of North Tongwa, majority of our people here are farmers. He has been an MP for 12 good years now, seeking for another four years mandate. I want Honorable Okudeto to tell we the people of North Tongue, what he has done 
as an MP for 12 years to help farmers. It's the same question you also asked. And then number two. It's the same number question. Number two, please, please, please. Please, please. Number, number two. Uh, the people of uh, Tonu, the people of Tonu were also affected by the flood. So when Honorable was talking, he was only concentrating on mefe, 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 mefe. Please, I want to ask Honorable Okuje told that when will the people of Tonu also benefit from the MP's initiative that he's doing? The people of Dofo, if we are not okay. part of North Tonu, he should let us know. Okay. And now, shall we Tonu all people. agree that he's supposed to answer the questions before he delivers his closing remarks? So please, I beg you. Nobody should attack me about time and honorable five minutes because you. you have three minutes, but I need you to respond to the question. So, honorable, just five minutes Thank and we are gone. Thank you very much. So, let me respond to the questions very quickly. I am happy that there have been questions on farmers. This is one of the areas I wanted to highlight, but because of time, I couldn't speak to. So, for, oh, for, for, for farmers and for agriculture. I have been a champion of farmers because I acknowledge that more than 80% of the workforce here are farmers. Only two years ago, I donated what you see in my hands, this combined harvester for our rice farmers, worth over $80,000, over $80,000, this combined harvester. And it came with tillers for our rice farmers. That is it. $80,000. This is the first and only time that rice farmers in North Tong have had combined harvester. Even the central government has never bought a combined harvester for our farmers. I did that for our farmers. In addition to that, what I also did, so you see the pictures, and you see how because of this, because of this combined harvester, rice production has gone up by 60% according to the agri directory. 60%. And only Togbe Wokbeji can do that for farmers in North Town. In addition to that, in addition to that, I set up I set up a cooperative union which was chaired by the current MPP chairman, Mr. Alfred Kony. He was responsible. It had tractors, we were distributing fertilizers, welding boots, chemicals for the farmers. Their own chairman okay, was sir. a coordinator. Let's move on. They are, they are Kony. Let's move on to so, your message, sir. So I have always been Let, the on. champion of farmers. How about the Now on course? job creation, job creation. I am happy you have asked about job creation. All the new hospitals that have come, the new surgical block, who do you think are working at those places. The additional health workers, the additional nurses, the additional doctors that have come in. This whole corridor, there was no medical doctor. I put up a special package of free accommodation, fully furnished home, television, Honorable, fridge, we are talking everything about job creation. For, for a doctor to be attracted here for the first time. Additional nurses that have come to work at the new health centers and the surgical block. So in terms of job creation, in the health sector alone, in the education sector, the new schools, we have built, we are the only party that has established secondary schools in North Town. They have not done that. Where do you think the new teachers at Volo Secondary, the new people working at the, at the, at the, at the, at the library, at the computer labs, these are all jobs that have been created by the NDC. So. We are the government that understands job creation. We believe in livelihoods, empowerment, decent jobs, restoring the dignity of people. And that is why all of these interventions. And you see, the beautiful part of the interventions that Honorable. I do, all the interventions that I do, I use local contractors, the white marker boards, local contractors, the, 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 the new farm projects, the combined harvesters, we are using local operators all right, for sir. all of these interventions. All right, sir. And when we revive Japan textiles, when we revive Aveima rice, which has collapsed, we are going to combine, create more than 10,000 jobs. And those will be local jobs for the youth 
of our constituency. All right, sir. Your now, message to the people. Now the message that I have to the people. Novinho. Ah, did you want him to answer the questions? Novinho. No. Did you ask the questions for the questions to be answered? No, you cannot show me how to do my job. You asked the question. You wanted him to answer. He has answered. Honorable, please go ahead. So you cannot be unfair are, to me. I've been very, are, very fair. Are, Don't do that. These you are my show concluding me how remarks. To do my job. No. Please. please no. Please, Honorable, two please. minutes, please. Two minutes Thank and let's close. My concluding remarks. You have seen the tremendous work that collectively we have done in North Tong. I have received many awards as the best member of parliament for North Tong, but I am more humbled and I am more inspired and encouraged to work harder for you. I promise you more delivery, more hard work. As I always say, we under promise and we over deliver. In the next four years, we are going to make sure that our abandoned victims of the VRA spillage, all of them are going to get the compensation that they deserve. The government has abandoned them. But under the NDC manifesto, President Mahama is saying that in his first 120 days, he is going to make sure that the abandoned spillage victims in North Town and beyond receive fair and adequate Honorable, compensation. Thank you. I am also going to make sure Honorable, that time is up. all the outstanding projects in education, in agriculture, in healthcare, we deliver on them. Together with your support, we retired Dr. Ella Blue's father. We are going to retire him as well. Thank you very much. This is and where we finally, break finally. and end to our community manifesto. This is where we end our community manifesto from the North Town constituency. Thank you so much, MPP. Thank you, NDC. Thank you to all the political parties present here this morning. And thank you to all the community members, especially those who contributed and those who had questions to ask. You are the reason we came, and we thank you that you have been able to engage with us. This is TV3's Community Manifesto. I am Kukiti. We'll see you in the next constituency.